There are. Mm -hmm. There are studies. In fact, some being funded by, I think, National Institute of Justice, MacArthur Foundation. There's a network on juvenile justice. That, it's following offenders. I mean, in, in a sense, it's yeah. kind of based on our design. It takes a delinquent group and it's following them through time. So it's in a, quote, uh, modern setting, uh, includes immigrants. So we'll be finding out. The other, the other thing that's happening is that you know, we, we talked about how we started the Gluck Project with finding this discovery of the data and then reconstructing it. But another important contribution we made is then doing our own follow-up study of the men as they approached age 70. So again, the first book, Crime in the Making, focused on the period of time in which the Gluck studied these delinquent boys from age 7 roughly to age 32. And then we launched our follow-up study in 1994, 1995, when the men were approaching age 70. And we collected criminal records, we collected death records, which turns out to be very important because many of the men died. And thirdly, we did interviews, life history interviews, with 52 of the men. And as a result, we have a very rich qualitative, quantitative mix, and we were able to take our new data collection merge it with the Gluck data and really have the longest longitudinal study of crime in the that, world. That's really important because we tend to think in criminal justice of just current data and don't value, I think, as much the utility of archive data that may, quote, seem old, but as John um, alluded to, I mean, if you're going to study individuals over a long period of time, then almost by ne necessity, their early lives will be, quote, in an earlier or older time. But they're contemporary in the sense that they're older now. So um, our effort was really um, demanded um, by the intellectual questions that we set right. forth. And what we learned in, in Stockholm was we, were, we inspired uh, Jerzy Sarnicki to go back to what was called the Stockholm Boys Cohort Study. And they're following them up now has older adults doing exactly what we did in our follow-up study. I talked to folks from Germany who have a longitudinal study and they're going to go and look for their records. So I think it's very exciting to, so we may be able to generate a number of long-term longitudinal studies to be able to look at many of these questions of both desistance from crime but also why do people persist in offending over the life course and then be able to have in a variety of settings, a variety of time periods, uh, a variety of population compositions to be able to cross compare findings which is which would be very very exciting.